What's going on guys? So today's gonna be a fun day. We're gonna take this brand new 2024 Chevy Silverado 2500 HD four wheel drive LTZ package Duramax powered truck with the 6.6 .6 liter and a 10 speed Allison transmission out on the road. Wow, that was a mouthful. This thing is super cool. If you didn't see the last couple videos I made on it where you can check out what the exterior, interior and all that looks like, definitely check it out. I absolutely love the look of this truck. They've done a phenomenal job refreshing it. The LED projection style headlights up there, cool LED accent trim around it. You got a chrome bumper, mainly because of the package that's on this truck, as well as some LED fog lights, front parking sensors, rear parking sensors, 360 degree camera. Uh, one of the only luxury features this truck doesn't have that I wish it did is the power telescoping uh, adjustable steering wheel. It's a manual adjusting steering wheel, but you do have the power telescoping mirrors, a power fold, you have the multi-flex tailgate, which is the one with all the cool technology in it for a step, a load stop, all of that stuff, even including a little workbench. You got your side steps right here that Ford copied on their truck. Um, yeah, beautiful truck, but we're going to take this thing out for a drive. Hang tight. I'll be right back. All right, check this thing out. This is a beauty. All sorts of cool technology in here. Really nice truck. Real quick recap of the numbers on this truck. This truck has a conventional trailer weight capacity of 18,500 pounds, which means you can haul all but the very heaviest of the living vehicles with this. Maximum tongue weight, 1,850 pounds. Gooseneck, 19,100 pounds. Maximum tongue weight, 2,865. So this would also be your fifth wheel capacity. It's 19,100 and a maximum tongue weight of 2,865 pounds. So yeah, you got some good capacities here. This has the upgraded gross vehicle weight rating of 11,350 pounds. Gross combined weight rating of 27,500 pounds. Again, cargo capacity, which is also down there, but it's 3,054 pounds. If this had a 10,000 pound gross vehicle weight rating, like a lot of three quarter ton trucks, that cargo capacity would be minus 1,350 pounds. So yeah, it would be significantly less, but they've upped the GVWR on these trucks to be able to be able to do more because you know that diesel engine takes a lot of weight away from the the capacity itself beautiful truck let's hit the road i'm going to do some interesting little driving here because i want to demonstrate to you a little bit of how i feel about the uh, ability of this truck to handle bumps definitely feels like a three-quarter ton truck not a three-quarter ton from 15 20 years ago but you know, they've improved the ride significantly in the last decade, but again, it still feels like a three-quarter ton truck, and I say that coming out of my half-ton Denali. So, you know, um, I've made the point time and time again that a half-ton truck is designed mainly to give you kind of a, a luxury SUV feel now these days. Even your most basic trims, they all really ride smooth. They ride incredibly smooth. If you're looking for the ultimate plush utility vehicle that you can get. It's a pickup truck these days. They're just absolutely amazing at, uh, at how smooth they're able to handle bumps and imperfections, even considering a lot of them, you know, still use a solid axle in the back with leaf sprung suspension. You know, hopping out of that truck and getting into this truck, uh, my wife instantly said, man, it's a lot bumpier. And that's true. It's a three quarter ton. So I don't want people to be under some delusional, you know, theory that if you get a three quarter ton truck and it's modern, that it's going to feel like a Cadillac. It's, it's not, it's going to feel bumpy. It's going to, especially when you're not towing anything or hauling anything. This thing's made to carry, you know, over 3,000 pounds worth of cargo or payload, and you have to have springs that are able to support that. Now, it's not going to be anywhere near as bumpy or rough as, say, my F450 or maybe even a Chevy 3500 HD dually regular cab truck or even a crew cab because the springs are definitely more compliant um, and softer than those trucks, but it still feels like a heavy-duty truck. That's probably the best way of saying it. Um, if I had to make a comparison, I'd probably say it feels like a half-ton truck probably felt 15 years ago, 10 years ago in that range. Um, so they've definitely been able to tune the suspension and get these to ride so much more compliantly than they've ever ridden, and they're so much smoother than they've ever been. But don't fool yourself into thinking, if I get a three-quarter ton truck and I'm coming out of you know a half-ton you know Chevy Silverado high country or if I'm coming out of a GMC, you know, Sierra pickup truck, 
then this is gonna be equally as smooth when you're comparing a three quarter ton to a half ton, because it's not gonna be. But it does have a very nice ride. For me, it is significantly nicer than the ride that I have in my F450. So a good way to compare it, or even if I had an F350, it's a much, much better ride, only because it's a three quarter ton and it's designed to have a little bit softer suspension. Okay, so this is actually a really good road to demonstrate what I'm talking about. Very bumpy road. Denali handles it pretty dang well. This truck, on the other hand, you definitely know that you're on a bumpy road. And it's not uncomfortable per se, but it definitely bounces the truck around a little bit more than it does in a half ton. And like I said, they've done a great job dampening the suspension down more than they've ever done in the past. So don't get me wrong, it's a relatively good ride considering it's a three quarter ton truck, but it's still a three quarter ton truck. That's the point I'm trying to make. Now acceleration in these diesel trucks is pretty dang amazing. I mean, boy, that 10 speed is buttery smooth. And it feels good. Very, very smooth shifts. Very, very quick acceleration. Definitely makes you feel like you have the power you paid for. Okay, so, you know, highway driving in a truck like this is gonna feel pretty much like most half-ton trucks until you start hitting some small expansion joints and things like that. And you can definitely tell when you hit some of the larger ones, the, the bumpiness or, or the little bit more of a firm, bumpy suspension. However, you know, if you're on a smooth road or relatively smooth road, the, the truck handles really well. It feels really good, very compliant. Again, they've done a great job kind of dialing in the suspension on these trucks to give you a really, really good overall driving impression. It just really, um, the best way to kind of define it is you've never been in a three quarter ton truck that drives as nice, rides as smooth as these newer trucks. That's probably the best way of saying it. It's better than they've ever been. They are, uh, they're definitely handling better than any truck that has come before them. And they are getting closer and closer and closer to making them nearly as soft as your more firm half ton trucks. Again, that's probably the best way I can describe it because you know, the reality of it is, is they're never probably gonna be as smooth as a half ton simply because they have to have heavier duty suspension. They have to be able to handle that up and down motion of a trailer adding pin weight and tongue weight to the back of the truck. And as long as you have that need for a heavier duty suspension, it's gonna come with a bit more of a firmer ride. Now, it would be interesting to see where the industry goes in terms of like adaptive suspension. If they can make it kind of like exhaust on some of these you know, high-end sports cars where you can turn it off or make it so it's not as loud or as aggressive, but then you can turn it on. Kind of like when I had that Cadillac V-Series, that thing was insane, that, uh, that SUV, but you could dial it down to more of a compliant everyday, you know, livable vehicle. And you kind of wonder if, if heavy duty trucks are going that direction as well, where you know, maybe they know they need to have heavy duty suspension whenever you're towing or hauling, but whenever it's just the family and you want to use it as an everyday vehicle, be able to press a button or change a mode and all of a sudden the truck handles like a half ton truck. That would be a really cool tech to see. Um, of course, it would be more to break, right? More technology, of course, leads to more possible problems. That said though, I think that uh, it's the direction we're probably gonna see the industry eventually go. Um, I personally have no problem with the way this truck rides. Um, giving you my impressions based on how I think a lot of people are hoping the truck will handle if they have a half ton and they're like, you know what, it's time to move to a three quarter ton. I wonder how my family's gonna adapt to that. So I'm just trying to be honest with you. You know, my impressions are, again, hopping out of a half ton Denali, moving into this three quarter ton Chevy heavy duty truck, and then also owning an Expedition as well as my F450. This is just how I would compare the ride of all of them. Um, you know, I do like the truck though. I love how it's set up. The interior is beautiful. The technology is absolutely amazing. There's so many reasons why you might want a truck like this. And if you plan on towing a larger travel trailer, this might be the perfect truck for you because it's gonna give you the capability and capacities that you need to be able to handle that size of trailer more efficiently, safer, as well as with less effort and more ease whenever you're towing. And those are really what you look for. 
I always talk to folks about towing RVs and, you know, saying that the trip shouldn't begin whenever you get to your campground. The, the recreational aspect of your trip should begin when you leave your house. And a poor towing experience can contribute to a lot of stress and anxiety on the road, which can make a trip feel pretty miserable because as much as you may be enjoying the time that you're out at an RV campground or you're out in nature with your family, if you dread the fact that now you have to tow your RV back home, well, then it takes away a large portion of that satisfaction that you might be looking for in taking time off and spending it with your family. So yeah, that said, um, when I talk about trucks like this, these are ideal trucks for hauling those larger travel trailers. You know, when you start looking at travel trailers that are between seven to 12,000 pounds that are gonna transfer 1,500 pounds or possibly a little more of tongue weight to the back of your vehicle, that's where a truck like this is ideal. That's what they're designed for. They're designed for those heavier tongue weights. They're a heavier truck. This truck weighs thousands of pounds more than a half ton truck. So you have to think about that. This is that, you know, am I walking a poodle or am I walking a German Shepherd? And that's really the thing you wanna think about is, does your truck have the weight? Does it have the power? Does it have the stability and the means to safely or as safe as possible tow the trailer that you might wanna put behind it? And that's all I generally want you to be aware of whenever I give you my towing recommendations. It's always puzzling to me sometimes when people are like, man, JD only thinks people should tow with an F450 or a dually. No, I just want you guys to have the best possible towing experience. It's kind of like if you go to a steakhouse and somebody's like, you know what, a sirloin tastes the same as a ribeye. And to some people, it's gonna be like, all you need is a sirloin. Why does JD want you to order a ribeye? Well, unless you taste the ribeye and you see the difference, you're probably not gonna appreciate it. And that's kind of, you know, the point I like to make with these trucks as well. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, I'd appreciate it if you took a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very, very soon.